The authorship of Isaiah is a very tangled question. It is primarily so because of a unique feature of the book of Isaiah. Other prophets talk about people in the future, but Isaiah talks to people in the future. And this raises a serious problem for many people. How could Isaiah in approximately 700 BC talk to people in 550 BC, 150 years in the future, surely that's not possible. And then the latter chapters of the book seem to be addressed generally to people after the return from exile, about 500. How in the world could that be possible? When this is coupled with some differences in style between chapters 1 to 39, chapters 40 to 55, and 56 to 66, this has produced the theory that there were at least three authors of the book. Isaiah, who wrote 1 to 39, and then somebody else who is conventionally called Second Isaiah, who wrote 40 to 55, and conventionally Third Isaiah, who wrote 56 to 66. But in fact, that is a vast oversimplification. There are probably no scholars today who would believe in three Isaiahs. What is believed today is called multiple authorship. And that is, Isaiah wrote maybe, maybe chapters 6 through 12. His disciples expanded that in various ways. Their disciples expanded it in other ways. Other disciples living during the exile expanded it other ways. Other disciples living during the return expanded it other ways, so that you really do not have three Isaiahs, you have hundreds of Isaiahs. And no longer is it neatly divided into 1 to 39, 40 to 55, 56, 66. Now, portions of 1 to 39 were written during the exile. Portions that are found in 40 to 55 really were written before the exile. So it is a tremendously complex picture now. I think the best way to say it is, according to that theory, the book of Isaiah was written by a committee which sat for about 400 years. My response to that is, when did you ever find one of the greatest pieces of literature in the world written by a committee? I would argue that, in fact, there is a single original source for Isaiah. Now, I would not deny at all that the book is a collection. I think it's a collection of Isaiah's speeches, Isaiah's talks, Isaiah's comments. Uh, if you know Luther, you know table talk, his comments sitting at table that were collected together. So I'm not at all sure that Isaiah himself wrote the book as we have it. However, I do believe that all that is in the book originated with Isaiah and probably that his disciples then were the ones who collected what he said and commented on and put it in its present form. Why do I believe that? Well, first of all, because of the present book. We have a book, and it is called by Isaiah. Isaiah is the only author who is represented in the book. He is the only one who is mentioned. And furthermore, our oldest example of Isaiah literature is the book of Isaiah from the Dead Sea Scrolls. And that is now dated to about 175 BC. Not a trace of any evidence of redaction or varying authors or committee members. It is a single scroll from end to end. And interestingly, chapter 39 ends two lines from the bottom of a column. 
if the copyists felt that, well, okay, there's a difference between the origin of 1 to 39 and the origin of what follows, how easy it would be to leave a space and start chapter 40 at the top of the next column. No space. Right straight on from the end of 39 to the first two lines of chapter 40, there it is. I also believe that Isaiah had a single originating mind with the argument for predictive prophecy that is so central to 40 to 55. The argument is stated and restated in those chapters, especially 41 to 48. The idols are part of this world. Those idol gods are part of this world, and they do not know the future. So how could they be called gods? Yahweh is God, and he has specifically foretold the future, including the name of the deliverer, Cyrus, and that proves that he is God. Now, if the person writing chapters 41 to 48 knows that in fact Isaiah did not predict Cyrus, he is making the prediction, then he's building that whole case on a lie. I know God didn't predict him, but I believe he should have, and I'm telling you, he did. I don't see how that works. When I began writing my commentary, I was open to the possibility. I mean, obviously, say the books of Kings, they were compiled over a 300-year period. So, but when I got to this part of the book, I said, whoa, no, 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 no. This is, this is the work of Isaiah. Now, let me say one more thing here. If, if I'm correct, if everything in the book has originated in one inspired source, why talk to people down there in the future? And I believe the reason is Isaiah had experienced the exile of the northern kingdom during his lifetime, and he is aware of the terrific implications of exile. By inspiration, he knows that Judah will be exiled as well. And so, in the light of that which had taken place, he says, you know what? And of course, the Holy Spirit is involved here as well. We need to have a complete package that's going to show how those people down there can believe in the God who was at work here. So I think it's that sense that, okay, I know what you're going to be going through. I know what the exile could mean. God has failed. But I want you to know that this God who delivered Jerusalem from Sennacherib is the same God who can deliver you from Babylon. I think that's why it has this unusual shape.